guys, it's Crystal with Pierre, and just really fast I wanted to go through a couple of tips and tricks with importing your images into Lightroom with keywords and different techniques like that. So first when you import your images, you're going to come down on the left hand side and click import. And then you're going to choose the images that you want to import into Lightroom. You can choose from all your different hard drives or your memory card. You can also come up here and choose a recently imported file and I'll go ahead and just choose Aspen's baptism photos to show you another issue that you might come across if you're not familiar with Lightroom. So if you've imported images before they will be grayed out like this and you won't be able to re-import them but you'll see that there's these images here that are checked which are I'm allowed to import because they have not been imported before. When I imported these images I didn't import these ones because they're blown out and I know I'm not going to be able to use them, so I just unchecked them. So if there's images that you don't want to import, you can just individually select them and they won't import. So then you come over to the right hand side and you click on build previews and the standard, not the standard, but the default is minimal and I like to do one to one. And the reason why I do that is because minimal does what it, so what it says, it builds a very minimal preview so when you click the image it may take a second or two to load the full image so you can edit the image. On the one-to-one, -one, it builds a 100% preview immediately, so your editing time is faster. It does, however, take longer to import your images into Lightroom with a one-to-one -one preview. However, I prefer to have that extra amount of time on the front end so I can do other things like answer emails or answer social media or Pinterest or play with my kids or anything else that I want to do. Because if I'm doing it, if I'm building a minimal preview and I'm waiting for that image to load, I'm stuck at my computer for that one to two seconds not being able to do anything. And while one or two seconds does not seem like a lot per image, when you are doing a wedding and you're editing 600 to 1,000 images, that adds up to almost 20 to 30 minutes of extra post-processing time of you just sitting in front of your computer not being efficient and not really able to do anything else because it's only taking one to two seconds and that's not long enough to really do anything else. So I build that 20 to 30 minutes on the front end so I can do other things. So I'll go ahead and choose one to one and then I'll go ahead and click metadata and I have a preset already saved but if you need to if you're new to Lightroom and you need to do a new one, just click new and name your preset. Just name it your business name or whatever you want to name it. And I'll go ahead and show you what mine looks like. So I just have pure Photoshop actions here. And it's just the information that I use is the IPTC copyright and then the copyright status. I choose copyrighted. And then I just put a link to our website, my name, and our email so people can get in contact with us. This information will carry forward through import and also through export to, J to your JPEGs. So I go ahead and just select that. And then the biggest thing that I can suggest is keywords. If you are, especially if you're just starting to use Lightroom, you've got 100, it's so easy to keep things organized and so easy to find things. There are times that I am trying to find an image that I know I took of a certain somebody or at a certain location or many different reasons and these keywords have been a lifesaver. So you can just type in as many as you want. I type in Aspen, comma, Aspen Baptism, comma, Tenley, comma, Boston, comma, whatever temple square comma and anything else and then once you're done you hit import and it will take a while to import so just go off and do something else or Pinterest or Facebook or whatever so once you're done and those images have imported you'll come to your library and it'll look like this so here on the right hand side you'll see keyword list and this will show you all the different images that you keyword keyworded and all the different keywords that you've used. You'll see that there's one that says Temple Square and there's two images that I've tagged with Temple Square. Now in this last, the newest import, I imported 293 images and all of my photographs I've 
imported 298 images. So there's a five image difference. So if I come up here to where it says none metadata attribute and text, if I click text and I search any searchable field contains all and I type temple square, which it tells me there's two images. This is going to say that there's no images. And that's because the two images that I imported with temple square were not in this last import. So I need to click all photographs and then come up to text and it'll default again to temple square and it will show me the two images that I've used the temple square keyword. Now if I click contains words temple square and hit enter, it's going to show me the two images also. So now if I click temple, It'll show me all these different words because I've also done Salt Lake Temple. And so I want to make sure that I type in Temple Square. So then that way it will show me the two images that I'm really wanting to see. So now you can come over to your collections. So let's say I want to create an Aspen's Baptism collection. So, but I also know that I want to create sub collections inside of that, like Aspen or Boston or sibling shots and different things like that. So first I'll come over to collections and I'll hit the plus sign and I'll say create a collection set. So now I'm going to name this Aspen Baptism. I'll go ahead and hit create. Okay, so now that I've got Aspen baptism collection set created. Now I can create collections underneath that. And so you'll notice that if you create a collection set, it looks like a, almost like a file box. And then once you create collections, it'll look like little folders inside said file box. And so I'm going to go ahead and select some photos of Aspen. So I'll go ahead and select these. And then I can come over here to collections and hit create collection. And you're going to want to make sure that you select inside of a collection set and hit Aspen's Baptism. The other thing you can do first, I usually like to do is over here on Aspen's Baptism, I'll select the first, I'll go back to the photographs to my import that I just imported and I'll go ahead and select the images. I select the first one and then hold down the shift button and select the last one. And then I'll come over to Aspen's Baptism and hit create collection. You can just right click it, right click on the Aspen's Baptism. And then I will name this Aspen Baptism All. And I'll go ahead and hit create. And it'll automatically create that subfolder here inside of the Aspen's Baptism. So you'll see that there's 293 images inside of here. So now I can go ahead and click Aspen's Baptism and I'll deselect all the images. Okay, so now I want to say I want to create a, a collection of Aspen with her siblings. So if I select, first I can come up here and hit collections and hit create collection and I'll name this Aspen and sibling. And you notice that there's one image selected and I'm not going to actually want that image in there. So I'll show you what you can do to, 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 to re remedy that. So I'll go ahead and hit create and you'll notice that there's one image inside of there. So the nice thing about these collections is you can select the image and you can just hit delete and it does not delete the images off of your hard drive or your catalog. It just deletes them out of that collection set or that collection. And it doesn't delete it out of the collection set either because here's the main image in the full collection set. So now I'll just go ahead. This is Aspen and siblings. So I'll go ahead and just select a, a few images of Aspen and her siblings. And now I can just drag and drop this over into Aspen and siblings. And so now I can select Aspen's baptism all, or I can just select the main collection set here. And if I select this image, Aspen's Baptism. All right, there we go. If I select this image, you'll notice that there's these two little things here. So if I click it, and for some reason it's showing down here, this is showing me that it's in two different collections. So if it was in multiple collections, it would show me which collection it was in. And then I could click Aspen and Siblings, and it would show me that image inside that collection. 
So again, if I click that, oh, there it goes, it's showing up there now. I can select Aspen Baptism All, and it will take me to that collection, and it'll show me the image inside of that collection and all the other images in that collection. So that's the nice thing about that. So, but I can delete, I can delete the image from this collection. So let me come, click on this and click Aspen's and Siblings. Now, if I select this image and I hit delete, I can come back to Aspen's Baptism All and the image is still there. It's just not in this collection anymore, but it is still in the Aspen Baptism collection. Again, I'll come back to Siblings and I'll select this image. And you'll notice there's 13 images in the Aspen and Siblings collection, and there's 293 in the Aspen's Baptism All. If I select this and hit delete, there's now 12 images in this collection, but there's still 293 in the Aspen Baptism All. So that image that I just deleted from Siblings is still there. So those are a few tips and tricks for Lightroom. There's tons of options with Lightroom and I hope that you can take the time and figure things out and make Lightroom work for you. These are just a few things that I use to keep my pictures organized and to keep myself organized because with the photography business things can get super crazy and this just allows me a little bit of sanity in that craziness. So if you have any questions go ahead and let me know. Thanks so much!